In this problem, we're going to verify the uncertainty principle for the wave function for the case when energy level is smaller than zero for the direct delta potential well. So it was proved in the book that the wave function, uh, the xi of x for this case, is going to be this expression here. So we're going to verify the uncertainty principle for this case. And then if we want to verify the uncertainty principle, we need to calculate the standard deviation of x and uh, momentum. That means we need to find the expected value of x and the expected value of x squared, as well as the expected value of momentum and the expected value of momentum squared. So in this video, I'm going to focus on finding these three terms first. So we're going to start off with the expected value of x. So the formula is just x multiplied by the absolute value of xi of x squared dx. And then you can see that this is actually just an odd function, so that's why this is going to be equal to zero. So if you integrate an odd function, from negative of some number to a positive of the same number, you're going to get zero. So if this is an integral from negative a to positive a, then it's going to be equal to zero. And this is what exactly what this is. You're integrating from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's why in the end you're going to get zero. And because of, uh, because of this fact, we know that the expected value of momentum, which is equal to the derivative of the expected value of x, is therefore also equal to zero. You just substitute zero over here. So we've already found two of these terms. So now let's move on to the expected value of x squared. So the expected value of x squared, the formula is just x squared multiplied by the absolute value of xi of x squared dx. And always remind yourself that this formula is true because uh, originally you don't, uh, the term that we should be using here should be the complete wave function the one with the t component as well. It's just that after we take the conjugate and then we multiply it together to get the absolute value sign, the t components just cancel out. That's why we can just uh, ignore the complete wave function and only deal with xi of x, so the, the term without the t component. So that's where this formula comes from, in case you don't remember. But uh, going back to this, uh, we're going to have to try to solve this integral. So let's just substitute this term into, uh, into here. So we have, we need to square the constants at the, at the front. So we have m alpha h bar square. And then we have e to the power of negative 2m alpha, the absolute value of x, divided by h bar square dx. So I'm just squaring this term. So I can move all these constants out. And then I'm going to break this integral up into two parts. I'm going to go from negative infinity to 0. And then, in such a case, the other integral is going to be from 0 to positive infinity. So you see that the only, I'm, not, I'm not doing anything special here. All I'm doing is just breaking the integral up into two parts. And you can see that both of these integrals actually give you the same result. You're going from, uh, because if you substitute in a negative number into this uh, term over here, you can see that this is squared, the negative sign just goes away. There's an absolute value sign, so the negative sign just goes away. So this integral is actually just the same as this one. So actually, I don't need to calculate two integrals. I can just calculate this one integral and then multiply by two, because that other integral was the same as this one. So this is a bit of simplification we could do. So just summarizing what we have so far, we have 2m alpha divided by h bar square. And then now we're going to go from 0 to infinity, instead of negative infinity to positive infinity. And then we have x squared e to the power of negative 2m alpha. And then instead of the absolute value of x, I'm going to just put down x, because from 0 to infinity, the absolute value of x is just equal to x. There is no change, because what you're, the number that you're putting in is already positive. And then here I'm going to do a bit of subs do a substitution to simplify things a bit. So I'm going to let this whole term here be equal to u. So that means du is going to be equal to 2m alpha divided by h bar squared dx. So this term multiplied by this term is going to be equal to du. And then the bounds, they still go from 0 to infinity. You just substitute 0 and infinity here. You see that it still goes from 0 to infinity. x squared becomes h bar squared divided by 2m alpha u squared. You can see that all I'm doing is just I'm pull, putting all the constants to the other side. Here we have e to the power of negative u. And then dx, 
I'm going to combine it with this term, and that's going to give me du. So let me just group all the constants outside. So we have full m square alpha square. And then we have this interval, u square e to the power of negative, d, negative u du. So now our challenge is to solve this interval. And we can do this by using integration by parts. So let's just pull this integral out and focus on this interval. So we do integration by parts. So we, we retain the u square, and then we integrate the e to the power of negative u, which gives us negative of e to the power of negative u. And this is going to be evaluated from 0 to infinity. And then now we retain this term, and then we differentiate this. So we have 2u negative e to the power of negative u du. So you can see that these negative signs, they cancel out. So if you substitute negative here, you have e to the power of negative infinity. This completely overrides the infinity square. Uh, this becomes 0. And then if you substitute 0, you just have 0 multiplied by 1. So that's also 0. So this whole term is just equal to 0. So here we're left with a slightly simpler integral. And then we need to do by parts again. So we retain the u term. And then we integrate the e to the power of negative u, which gives us this. We evaluate it from 0 to infinity. And then now we retain the e negative e to the power of negative u, and then we differentiate this, which just becomes 1. So this is what we have inside the integral. And then once again, the negative sign it goes away. And then substituting in infinity, e to the power of negative infinity, this is extremely small. It completely overrides the infinity over here, so it just becomes 0. And then when you substitute in 0, you have 0 multiplied by 1, so it's also equal to 0. So this whole term is just equal to 0. You can see the reasoning is kind of similar to what we had over here. So in the end, we have 2 times this integral, which is easy to solve. We just have negative e to the power of negative u. So you substitute in infinity, you have e to the power of negative infinity, that's just 0. And then you have minus, uh, you substitute 0, you just have negative 1. So you have minus negative 1. So this whole thing is just equal to positive 1, so it's just equal to 2. So this integral here is just equal to 2. So that means going back here, this whole term here is just equal to 2. So we can see that our answer in the end is equal to h bar to the power of 4 divided by 2m squared alpha squared. So this is your expected value of x squared. And then at this point, we can actually calculate the, uh, the standard deviation of x already because we've already found the uh, expected value of x and the expected value of x squared. So we might as well just do that as well. So this is the formula for standard deviation. Uh, this term we just found is equal to uh, this expression here. So we just substitute that in. So 2m squared alpha squared. This we found is equal to 0. So in the end, you have h bar squared divided by the square root of 2m alpha. So this is the standard deviation of x. And then at this point, might as well we we've read uh, we've already been given uh, what the expected value of p squared is. So I'm going to prove how you can how you can obtain this result in the next video. So don't worry, I'm going to prove this in the next video. But uh, since they've given us this result already, we might as well just find the expected value of momentum as well. So the next video is going to be completely focused on finding this term. Uh, but since they've given us this uh, the answer already, we're going to cheat and then we're just going to calculate the standard deviation of momentum first. So let's just substitute the result that we that they've given us. So don't worry, we're going to prove this in the how we, how we can obtain this in the next video. And the expected value of momentum, that's just equal to zero. So this whole thing is just equal to m alpha divided by h bar. So this is the standard deviation of p of momentum. And as you can see that we can actually already uh, verify the uncertainty principle. If you multiply both of these together, so let me just write this out, and you cancel out the like terms, you see that this is equal to h bar divided by the square root of 2. And this can be rewritten as the square root of 2 divided by 2 times h bar. And of course this is larger than h bar divided by 2 because the square root of 2 is equal to, uh, is larger than 1. So you can see that this product must always be larger than h bar divided by 2. And so you see that the uncertainty principle is indeed verified.